Uh, this is the PVC land sale laid out. Three quarter inch PVC pipe. The gray is UV resistant, which doesn't matter, white or gray. So we have four T's. One, two, three, four. Four 90 degree elbows. One, two, three, four. Now we're going to start with the front. This piece here is two inches. The front two sides are 15 and a half inches each. The mast step is three and a quarter inches. The back sides are 21 and a half inches each. The back piece is five and a quarter inches. And these arms for the wheel holders are 10 inches a piece. There you're gluing there. this thing. As you glue it, you need a flat surface. So every time you glue it, you lay it flat so it doesn't get crooked as you're gluing it. Or you could match mark all the fittings and then glue them accordingly. But that's basically it before you glue it together. The key is, is to glue one piece at a time. And as you glue it, you lay it flat on the floor. Keep it flat so it's always flat when it's gluing while it dries. Okay, which doesn't take long. And you just use that little purple stuff on the fittings with the glue, and that's fine. I don't think you need to sand them. They seem to hold really well. Okay, and that's what it looks like when it's all put together. Okay, so that's that step. I took a half inch of PVC and stuck it under the back edge of the mast step off of the T's. And this will give you like a 10 degree angle for the mast when you drill it. And this is the hole pre -dr already drilled through both so parts of the piece. This piece right here, and we're going to cut it a little lip off, wider than the hole in the mast step. We're going to cut this, and then we're going to cut it just beyond halfway to a clip that we're going to glue underneath the mast step. This is called a homemade mast step block, and what we're going to do is we're going to put it on the bottom. Glue it on the bottom side of the mast hole. So in other words, it's going to snap right in there like that. We're going to glue it with PVC glue and stuff. And what that does is keeps the mast from going all the way through when it's loaded. And don't drag on the ground. So what happens is, once we glue that in place, go through two holes. You'll feel it pop right in there, and there she is. That's the mast step. And probably glue it a little more centered like that. Get an idea, a close idea, of what I did here. And that's basically it. Pretty simple stuff. So it gives you an idea how the mass looks. Slight, about 10 degree rake. We're making the front steering. These are the two sides, and the measurement across here is two and a half inches by three inches. Make two of them. Cut them out. These are the quarter inch hole for the front wheel and these are little pilot holes for to screw it into the side of this thing. When we cut this out this is going to be go sideways in between. This here is two and a half from here to here by inch and an eighth here to here. This is the top piece and we're going to dr drill a quarter inch bolt. Carriage bolt's going to go through here and bolt on after we mount it to these this two This is plates. that cutting board material that is cut out with a scroll saw. It looks like about a half inch thick. Works real well. And this is fiberglass sheet that is um, quarter inch thick okay and this is going to be the front wheel assembly the front wheel assembly screwed together into the thing and he painted this all rough but it gives you an idea and what this carriage bolt is going to do is go right through the center hole goes right through the center hole and that square thing there when you tighten this uh, nut up on the top will mount this inside this plastic it'll just pull it right in there and that keeps it from slipping on the shaft this is the top assembly with the carriage bolt through it this is a two arm system I like the two arm you can go with single arm you can even go with um, uh, the one wire through the cable like a bicycle cable that runs just the one arm but I like two it's more positive and faster reacting for me but either way is good um, but this is how the top of the uh, uh, arm is mounted, screwed right into the top uh, cutting board plate. Okay, so this is the, there's a washer with a nut on there, aircraft nut that doesn't come loose. And it pulled the carriage bolt right up into the plastic like that, which keeps it positive from slipping. But that's the assembly when it's done. That's what it looks like. This is a 72 millimeter hockey wheel. Bolt that puts it in is quarter inch. 
by inch and three quarter. Two washers that go on each side of the bearing so it doesn't rub on the plastic. And an aircraft nut to finish Washer it off. on each side of the wheel and with the bolt through it. This is the hockey uh, wheel, 72 millimeter, which is put on there with a bolt and an aircraft nut for it doesn't come loose. Sometimes you want, might want to put two washers in between the plate and the wheel on each side, but uh, one right now seems to be okay. As long as it, when you spin it, it doesn't uh, uh, catch. So if it's spinning like that, it looks pretty good. And what we got is an aircraft nut in between there with a washer underneath. This is a carriage bolt that goes through. Then we have a spacer with a washer and an aircraft nut on top. Or you cut that off and put this nut on there to give you a, a nice cap this is look. Another way, this is another way of doing the um, uh, front steering. This is a nylon shiv that's epoxied into the PVC pipe with a quarter inch hole. And that tends to wear good. It's another option you can do here. So you put that shiv in there, which is like this. It's a half inch hole. You put this in, epoxy this in, and then the shaft for the steering goes through there, which tends to not wear out as fast as if it were just plain on here. And that's here. the setup with the front wheel installed with the uh, plates and the thing. Now you can sand this and paint it and make it look real nice. So this is just a rough idea and it gets you an idea how it works. So then the servo, which is going to be set back on there on a plate, is going to be upside down with two wires going to these um, ears that turn the bolt. So it goes like this and like that. Okay, this is the land sailor upside down. This is the steering mechanism or servo. You're going to have a wire come from here to here. And a wire come from there to the other side, which controls the steering. And this is mounted just with regular little wood screws right to the bottom of the PVC This servo pipe. has to be in the center to steer, make sure it's even, evenly steered. But that's how it's mounted, and that's how the steering mechanism works. As you can see, this is upside down with the wheel, and this is what's going to turn it with wires. This is the kind of wire I use. The hook onto here and then onto the front steering. They kind of got it set up like that. It's easy removal. Goes in and out. And this one's just bent down, and you might want to slightly bend it around for it doesn't pop out while you're driving. But that's what I use. There's many other ways of doing this. Um, this I figure is more positive, but uh, this is a cheap and simple way to do it. This stuff is at the hobby store. You can get pretty cheap. It's just hard wire. Okay. This plate is two and a half by four and a half inches and from the front of the land sailor to the front of the plate is nine and a quarter inches set back. This here is just my homemade battery pack holder because you're going to have batteries in the little um, intersection where you plug all your wires into and it can't be hanging there so I kind of did this. It's got velcro on one side of course the K logo but a velcro over here so when you put it together anyway this is it and what it does is it holds all the the batteries and stuff on the inside there's a little velcro here too to close this shut and then there's a flap here but this ends up this ends up around the around the bowl like that and the wires and the batteries that lead to it it kind of holds it now you can make a plate and mount your batteries on there with a cap or lid or whatever but I just did this because it was pretty simple to make this back plate is three inches by six and a quarter this way it gives you an idea how big that plate is. This back plate is set back 10 inches from the back, and the center of this arm is 12 inches from the back. So it gives you an idea where the boom trim is going to go, right there in the center of that plate. And this is all the battery pack stuff that I was telling you about earlier. This is all the battery pack stuff that I put inside of this that's velcroed together. Kind of hides it. Like I say, you can use a plate or mount it with a box or whatever you want to do. But that's how that is mounted. This is a servo sailing winch with a big long arm on it. I have it offset because uh, when it's when it comes on, this would be all the way trimmed, this would be all the way loose. So this would be totally straightforward when it's eased off. I screw in the back here for the boom, just one eye. These screw. are all the attachments for the shrouds and the head stay. This is the head stay attachment. Those right here. Come back for sail trim. When the sail trim comes down, it goes through this loop and right to the arm. 
on the shrouds. These are eye screws put into the elbows where the wheels go. One on that side, one on that side. They have a three stay system here, basically like an ice boat. Um, you can adjust these shrouds tighter, which will bend the mast, give it more curve by tightening these two shrouds. Wheels. Since we have a bigger, bigger uh, piece here, then here gives it a little more style. Well, this, as you can see in the picture here, let me try to get it here, is not straight. So what you want to do is, when we go to do the wheels, you're going to mark the dot and the dot. We're going to put a straight edge on there. Basically like that. So when we join, we mark the inside line and the inside line there. So when you go to drill this, this will keep it straight. So when you're drilling this drill, comes in here, you just line the other mark up and you know this wheel when it's mounted on here will be uh, square. It won't be like this or this, it'll be square. Even though the frame of the um, land sailor is angled just for style. So you, this is definitely important. So the alignment of the wheels are fairly straight, as you see here. So when you drill, drill through there, and then you'll line up the drill in the next one and then drill through there. Bolt. And roughly this bolt is three inches deep. So it's three inches. Um, you can use a better cap on your bolt, but I stuck these on there because um, I had them laying around so you can get real fancy and have nice cap ones on there But what I do is I put a washer in between the bearing and where it mounts onto the PVC because that gives it a free wheeling Gives it a uh, from rubbing onto the of the PVC and slowing it down So you want a real fast wheel that doesn't have any friction on it So I put the washer on there before I mount it on it Okay, that's basically it. That's the wheel. Spins really nice. No uh, friction on there at all. That washer in between helps out really well. So that's how you mount the wheels. These are 100 millimeter uh, speed wheels.